Here we're going to take a look at IAS 16 dealing with property, plant, and equipment. Traditionally, we use the cost method for property, plant, and equipment, where we take the cost paid for the asset, record accumulated depreciation over the useful life of the asset, and end up with our book value. This is traditionally used under US GAAP and is also acceptable under IFRS. Additionally, under IFRS, we have the revaluation method of dealing with fixed assets. Here, rather than being stuck with one specific value, the asset can change over time and be revalued to increase or decrease to match the market price. Whenever the value of the asset increases, we have the option of getting rid of our accumulated depreciation or adjusting our accumulated depreciation and recording a new account called the revaluation surplus, which appears on our statement of other comprehensive income. As I mentioned before, this is perfectly acceptable under IFRS. When you're using the revaluation method, there are two when you're using the revaluation method, there are two acceptable solutions for this. The first one is called the proportional method. And the proportional method takes a change to both the asset and the accumulated depreciation over time. For example, here we have an asset that has 30% accumulated depreciation. When we revalue that, we adjust the fair value of the asset in proportion to the amount of accumulated depreciation that we have. So both of these, so both the asset and the accumulated depreciation account will be adjusted and the difference will be recorded in this revaluation surplus. If you look at this from a journal entry perspective, imagine that we have an asset that is worth $100,000 with accumulated depreciation of 30% or $30,000. The book value of this asset would be recorded at 70,000. Now we go out and we find the asset is worth more. In fact, the fair value of the asset is $105,000. This represents a 50% increase of the book value, an additional $35,000. The proportional method would have us add an additional 50% to the value of the asset. So now we'd have an asset worth $150,000, as well as the accumulated depreciation. So we'd now have $45,000 of accumulated depreciation. For the journal entries for this, we would record a debit to the asset for the $50,000 increase. We would credit accumulated depreciation to increase it by $15,000. And the difference of 35,000 would be recorded in other comprehensive income as a revaluation surplus. Represented here. The alternative method is what we call the gross method. And this one's a little bit more simplistic. The gross method, rather than looking at proportions of uh, accumulated depreciation, will simply get rid of any accumulated depreciation that we have and value the asset at the fair value. So in this case, if the vest, its values goes up, we would wipe out that accumulated depreciation and start it over as if it were a new asset. Again, the difference is going to be recorded as a revaluation surplus. So we had that same asset of $100,000 with accumulated depreciation of $30,000. The book value now, again, is $70,000. If we revalue the asset to $105,000, that 50% increase, we're going to wipe out accumulated depreciation and have a balance of zero, and revalue the asset itself to $105,000, adding $5,000 to the asset. The journal entry would look like this. You would debit your asset for the $5,000 increase. You could also debit accumulated depreciation for the $30,000 that was recorded. And the difference is going to be adjusted to revaluation surplus. So we still have the same amount of surplus of $35,000. They just are attributed to different accounts. One other thing to be aware of with IAS 16 is that assets can be 
recorded by their components and not necessarily the entire thing. Which means you may have a building that is recorded separately from the electrical installations and the fixtures that are in that building. Each of these represent different components of that asset. This particularly comes into hand when you're calculating depreciation. Because you may have the building with a cost basis of 200,000, electrical of 50,000, and fixtures of 40,000. With useful lives, respectively, of 50 years, 20 years, and 10 years. So rather than taking a straight line approach to depreciation for the entire asset, we record $4,000 of depreciation for the building, 2.5 for the electrical, and 4,000 for the fixtures, meaning annual depreciation would be $10,500.